the matchless name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Such a joy and a privilege to come and minister to my wonderful family in Christ. Thank God for my pastor, Wilson Joseph, whom I look at him like a dad, a father in the Lord, and a Pastor Roy, and their wives, who has been always a pillar for their ministry. I thank God for this church. It's such a joy and honor to stand in this platform and glorify God. Thank you, Stephen, for allowing me to come this evening and share from the Word of God. Amen. Uh, as you all might have seen me in conventions and all that, I don't miss your conventions. I am there somewhere around this hall. But miss those good old days, Pastor. Miss those good old days where we could just walk in. And uh, as I entered into this hall towards the end of this meeting, as the worship was going on, Honestly, I could not enter into this hall. Such electrifying presence of the Holy Spirit. Such an anointing that was manifested. I saw there was fire and glory that was moving around this place. I saw the shackles were being broken. I saw there was foundations that has been broken. I saw there were chains that has been broken. I saw sickness leave in this hall. Even to those people who are watching us online. I saw the glorifying presence of the Holy Spirit. Hovering over every home, sir. Even even as we are worshipping them tonight, as we are worshipping our Lord tonight, uh, I want the church to be prepared for the word that God is going to speak to us. There is nothing impossible with God. There is nothing impossible with God. We are standing in a very unprecedented times, uh, but that doesn't matter. The word of God does not change. He's the same yesterday, today and forever. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Once again, I'm so blessed and so privileged to stand with this congregation and glorify God. Thank you, Pastor Wilson Joseph, for being a father in this generation. There are many pastors, there are many pastors in around the world, but there are very less pastors with a father's heart. You must be so privileged and honored to have such kind of fathers who has a who has who's a pastor with a father's heart. Who is there to care for us? Who is there to guide us? Who is there to lift you up? Oh, come on. Who I, I am so glory. I'm so thankful for leaders like them who encourages the generation to move forward, who encourages young people to rise up because they believe in passing on the baton. Hallelujah. They want to pass on the baton to the next generation so that young people, you will rise up. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank God for leaders like uh, Jerin and Jason, their parents. I appreciate what the parents have been doing in the generation to sow a seed so that you can see young people will rise up. I'm sad to, I'm sad to say this, there are many parents who have called me and said that, Pastor, my children have fallen from grace. They do not want to come back to church. They have become very cozy and comfortable in the Zoom platform. They don't even switch on the cameras. I have nothing against those people who does not switch on cameras. But as long as the hand of God is upon you, as long as you are sitting in the presence of God in prayer, God will definitely manifest. This evening, as I was coming over here, the Lord showed me a verse, which is not my key verse for tonight. But this is what the Lord told me to read it out to you. Let's Turn our attention to the book of Jeremiah chapter 31 verses 1 to 4. At that time declares the Lord, I will be the God of all the clans of Israel and they will be my people. This is what the Lord says. The people who survive the sword will find favor in the desert. I will come to give rest to Israel. The Lord appeared to us in the past saying, I have loved you with an everlasting love. I have drawn you with loving kindness. Listen to this particular verse, verse 4. I will build you up again and you will be rebuilt, O virgin Israel. Again, you will take up your tamarinds and go out to dance with the joyful. Hallelujah. This is what the Lord told me to tell you. I will be the God of all the clans of this ministry. I will be your God. And it says, they will be my people. Young people don't say that, oh, I don't have anybody. Sadly, we're standing in a, in a times that, you know, we feel empty and, and lonely. Even though we have fellowships, even though we have meetings after meetings after meetings. Can I ask you a question? Where are you this evening? 
There are many souls who are empty, Pastor Wilson Joseph. There are many believers who have disconnected from the presence of God. They are there in the front of all the meetings. But they have disconnected themselves. But tonight the Lord put, me, put this word in my heart that told me to tell my people, Come back. I'm going to rebuild you. I'm going to rebuild you again, your virgin Israel. I don't know why the Lord put this word in my heart. It says in verse 2, the people who survive the sword will find favor in the desert. Some translations say, you will find grace. You will find loving kindness in the desert. Even in this wilderness, there is a times of favor that you're going to receive. How many of you believe that there is going to be times where I will walk in divine favor? Uh, you might be having questions, Pastor. My prayers are not answered. Many of my prayers are not yet answered. That doesn't mean that God has changed his attitude. There are many promises yet to be fulfilled. That doesn't mean that God has forgotten his promises. I want to encourage you this evening. I know that today the presence of God is so evident in this hall that the angels of the Lord are sitting in every empty seats over here. The angels of the Lord are rejoicing that there is going to be such a powerful move towards the end of this meeting that you will say that Lord thank you for bringing us back after 15 months. My heart is filled with so much of joy that we can together praise him. Many could not make it. Many could not see this evening. But thank God for the gift of life. Thank God that he has sustained us. He has protected us from every works of the enemy. And he has taken us in his arms. It says like this, I will come to give rest to Israel. Church, there are times of rest that is going to come to you. For all the toilings that you've been doing day and night and you've been empty. Peter, I am going to come into your boat. Brother Stephen had spoken about that in the last English service. How the empty boats were filled. How Peter's life was changed. Today, this evening, I want to tell you that there is going to be a visitation from God. My time is very less. Verse 3 says, The Lord appeared to us in the passing. I have loved you with an everlasting love. That love is not how you see from your spouses, from your parents, from your brothers and sisters. It is a different love. This is not as an everlasting love. It says like this, I have drawn you with loving kindness. Can I ask you church, do you have that same passion that the Lord has in his heart? Do you have that same love that you, the Lord has shown us? Even when we didn't deserve it, the Lord came to seek and save the lost. He came to find us. He came to redeem us. He came to restore our life. Let me go very quickly. Verse 4. Write it down. Mark it down. This is a prophetic word to this church and this ministry. That I will build you up again. That means there was a time that the Israelites were built. But something happened. That something happened that their altars had to be repaired. Their life had to be rebuilt. Let me go very quickly and say this, and you will be rebuilt. This is what the Lord told me to tell you, that I am going to build my church again. I am going to build the lives of my people. I am going to build the lives of those people who will earnestly seek my face. What happened when Elijah, when he was, uh, you know, when he was with the, with the, the uh, other prophets of Baal in, the, in 1 Kings chapter 18, he was challenging the prophets of Baal. Let's see, whose God will call down fire, bring down fire. You know, they did everything that they can in, 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 in 1 Kings chapter 18, you can read. But this is what strikes me. In verse 30, then Elijah said to all the people, come here to me. When it was his turn, he told, come here to me. They came to him and he repaired the altar of the Lord, which was in ruins. If you want to see the fire of God, you must repair your broken altars. If you want to see the move of the Holy Spirit, you must repair your broken lives that is in, in, in different pieces. You, wanna, you, you have to come back to the presence of God and say, Father, forgive me, restore my life. And He wants to repair your prayer life that is broken. Your, your altar of holiness which is broken must be rebuilt. Your, your relationship with God, that if that altar is broken, must be rebuilt. God is in the presence.
process of rebuilding and I sense the presence of God rebuilding the life of people even to my brother sisters who's watching us on online this is your moment this is your time how many of you say father rebuild my life reinstate me my master I want to come back to the presence of God I want to come back to the heart of worship I want to come to your presence I want to be soaked in the glory of God church this is not the time to run out of the pleasures of the world in, 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 into doing the things of the world that can please others but it is time to chase the presence of God Ah, come on young people rise up young people my heart goes for you I want to encourage the mothers the parents do not stop praying you know I am an answer to my mother's tears dead in my mother's womb for three days doctor said oh this baby is dead there is no more movements in this baby after my elder sister my brother was born he was he when he came out of my mother's womb he was dead and the same thing repeated her many a times we cannot accept the reality of the next miracle because our old past hinders us ah to whom am i speaking to this evening i am not the usual kind of preachers who will come and preach genesis to revelation and walk out in this place i'm here to share the heart of god my mother believed that i will pray in spite of my impossibilities around me and i will seek the presence of god when my mother held my brother that the baby who, who passed away after delivery just by crying and mama my mother took the baby and said the lord thank you that you're going to give me the same baby back next year this time you can claim your promises what the enemy snatches out of your hands if the enemy plucks out the plucks out your miracles from your hand you can claim it back you can tell the lord lord i need my miracle back enemy you cannot touch me and my family because i am the son and the daughter of the most high god you can claim back your promises you can claim back your miracles you can claim back everything but the enemy has stolen from you my mother cried out and the lord said i will bless you on the on the first day nothing happened quiet doctor said no heartbeat second day no heartbeat third day no heartbeat my mother believed in the resurrection power of God she was not a born again or a Pentecostal person but she believed that there is a God who will hear my cry there is a God who will surely do a miracle as she was praying and she's committed my, uh, that, uh, that if she prayed I pray Lord I commit this baby into your hands may you use him for thy glory use him as he comes into this world at that moment the power of God came upon my mother I started to move back in my mother's womb and my mother said father I thank you that my baby is back alive the doctors could not believe it when you start praying my brothers and sisters you will experience miracles that the world cannot believe it because you carry the presence of God you carry the glory of God you carry the manifest the presence of the Holy Spirit tonight the Lord says uh, your miracle lies in your faith tonight uh, your miracle lies in the words of your, your words of your mouth when you prophesy when you speak it you don't have to run after prophets I am not against prophets I thank God for prophets of this generation I am also I do prophesy as the Lord prompts me but I'm not against them you know who's the greatest prophets and the prophetesses of the generation you are the one ah uh, come on I am looking at some great prophets and prophetesses of the generation look into your children and say my children will carry the presence of God my children will be good to good students my children will carry the presence of the God to the nations of the world do you have that faith when my mother prayed that prayer uh, I never knew that at the age of 18 I just wanted to go into the, all the pleasures of the world but my tears of my mother brought me back I want to encourage the mothers and the fathers, especially the mothers. Do not stop crying for your miracle. Do not stop crying for the miracle that you've been waiting for so many years. Thus saith the Lord that many prayer requests that hasn't been answered. The Lord says from the seventh month before this month, before this year comes to an end. There's going to be answers to your prayers. You will see answers to your cries. 
How many of you will say, testify the Lord in this very hall. Father, we thank you that Lord, that you have never left us alone. You are a God who provides. You are a God who opens doors. You are a God who restores my health. You are a God who will use me for thy glory. The next seven months, church, be prepared for the sensitive move of the Holy Spirit. You are going to encounter angels of God in this meeting, sir. People might not understand it, but I encourage the leaders that you will press on to the presence of God, that you will walk with the glory of God. You will see if if Shandrak, Meshach, Abednego had to go through fire, there came the presence of God. I believe there's going to be presence of God going to come even during your worship sessions, where you will see the glorious hand of God. I will build you up again and you will be rebuilt, says the Lord. Are you ready to be rebuilt in the hands of God? There is going to be unusual favor that God is going to show you in the days to come. How many of you say, Father, I want to thank you that there is going to be unusual miracles. In the book of 1 Samuel, hallelujah, the Lord's presence is here. The other thing that the Lord just prompts me to tell you is that in during worship sessions there's going to be visions and dreams in this church you're going to have pastor this is what the lord says that you're going to have clarity concerning people that you will god will clearly show what it is the situation of the people and what is going to come amen hallelujah i'm so excited to be here i have another exactly 10 more minutes let me go very quickly in the second the book of second samuel chapter 9 we know this passage very well but this is what the message the lord told me to speak to uh, you, you, uh my my church here this evening it talks about david and mephibosheth david asked is there anyone still left of the house of saul to whom i can show kindness for jonathan's sake now there was a servant of saul's household named ziba they called him to appear before David and the king said to him, Are you Ziba, your servant? He replied. The king asked, Is that no one still left of the house of Saul to whom I can show God's kindness? It was not David's kindness. It was God's kindness. God will use people to show us kindness. God will bring in men and women of God to show the kindness of God. Ha. You know, I don't look at my pastors, Pastor Wilson, Pastor Roy, Brother Stephen as just a human being. They are the agents of God. They carry the glory of God. They they are placed here. They have been put in this position to show God's kindness and God's presence into your life. Come on, young people, are you there with me? I will not take much time. Listen to me very carefully. The Lord spoke to me the other day and said that, you know, there are many people who need loving kindness. They need our love. I'm a person who will never leave even those guys at the petrol stations who fill my petrol. I take moments and tell them, how are you? Are you doing good? They look very frustrated. When I ask them about the home and all that, they feel nice. And I will make sure that I will tell them about the love of God in that Two minutes time of filling my petrol, I will present the gospel. Even when I go to any restaurants, McDonald's, wherever, I make sure that I take a moment and ask them, how are you? You know what, ha- what is the reason that the world lacks, the world lacks people to speak to each other? I do not know how many of you have read this. This happened just two weeks back. As you all know about a, 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 a social worker called Ashraf Tamshiri. He is a social worker in Dubai who does body, dead body repatriation to India. We all know him. He does it for free. If you want to bless him, bless him. He received a phone call two weeks back, early morning, and said that, Sir, my name is Santosh from Sharjah. I wanted to speak to you. Say, what can I do for you? So one of my friends, he, he, he passed away. Can you send his body on that Thursday? He said, uh, how did he die? Well, he committed suicide. Well, I can't send the body today. Maybe by Sunday I can do that. He said, uh, sir, but please try your best to send it today. So my PRO will be calling you up. He said, okay, give my number. In the afternoon, the PRO calls him up, Mr. Ashraf, and says that, sir, uh, I have a, a request. 
there is a dead body can you please help us do the process works he said where were you all this time your colleague mr santosh called me up and told me about this person early morning and you're calling me up back now i sort of got very angry anyway you give me the details let me just see what i can do and the pro responded to him like this sir the person the santosh that call you this morning is a very person who has committed suicide i was shocked like how you were today and i should ask this question santosh why did you do that you could have spoken to me what your problem was but it might be financial whether it might be a job whatever it is you could have spoken to me santosh why did you do this santosh let me tell you this church there are many santoshes around our lives there are many people who are living frustrated who can't even share their emotions with each other i'm sorry to say that is there even in the churches around the world people do not know whom to share my feelings so they can't even sometimes talk to their spouses they can't even speak to their pastors but let me tell you this david didn't forget jonathan because during the most painful times of david's journey there was a friend called jonathan who stood by david they were covenant friends they were covenant brothers let me tell you this young people you have a good future ahead of you church you have an amazing future ahead of you no matter what the problems are there is solution for everything in the presence of god that's why god has blessed us with some amazing leaders who has a father's heart they will understand your pain we are not people who does not understand the heartbeat of the people please speak to us we are here to we are willing to listen to you we are here to help you out that's why don't miss your opportunity uncle to sp- spread the love of christ to whomever i come in contact with church it is time that we build ourselves and be prepared to build the life of so many people who are there without jesus i know that this is a very vast subject which i can't preach and complete but let me go very quickly down and it says like this in verse 5 so king david had him brought from lord debar from the house of makir son of amiel when mephibosheth okay let me go to verse 3 it says the king said if is there no one still left of the house of soul to show to whom i can show god's kindness ziba answered the king there is still a son of jonathan he is crippled in both feet who is jonathan he is the, he is the next king of israel actually he is a son of saul now if you read uh, in second samuel chapter 4 verse 4 what happened to this boy that he he got crippled it's written over that jonathan son of saul had a son who was lame in both feet he was 5 years old when the news about saul and jonathan came from just real his nurse picked him up and fled but as she hurried to leave he fell and became crippled his name was mephibosheth he was a 5 year old healthy boy but during that uh, accident he fell down and he got crippled mephibosheth thought that there is no one to look after me anymore mephibosheth thought that there is no one to look after me there's no one who will care for me because i am crippled according to according to the law of moses crippled is out they can't even come closer to the city but here mephibosheth got an invitation from the royal family he got an invitation from king david let me go very soon verse 6 says when mephibosheth son of jonathan the son of saul came to david he bowed down to pay him honor david said mephibosheth your servant he replied don't be afraid listen to this 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 i'm going to pray and conclude do not don't be afraid david said to him for i will surely show you kindness for the sake of your father jonathan this one word that came from the mouth of the king encouraged mephibosheth do not be afraid church you don't have to preach from genesis to revelation to everybody but you can pet somebody's life and say do not be afraid god will make a way god will surely honor you god will remember you here david says do not be afraid 
for I will surely show you kindness. Remember, when David was in the times of trouble, Jonathan stood beside David in all regards. Jonathan showed his kindness to David. This was time to repay back the kindness that he received from Jonathan. It was time that you know David was seeking that how I can show back my respect, my my my, my kindness to the to, to the to the household of Saul. Before the the ninth chapter, you can see the victories David got. But David was much more concerned about showing kindness because he knew from where God lifted him up. Church, do not forget from the ways that God has brought you till this far. It says over there. Not only I will show you kindness, I will restore to you all the land that belonged to your grandfather's soul and you will always eat at my table. God is encouraging somebody here and saying that do not be afraid. Second thing David is saying, with the Lord is speaking to you, I am going to show you kindness. You know with kindness what comes next? It says I will restore to you all the land that belonged to your grandfather's soul. Mephibosheth was totally a person that was cast out. He didn't have anything in his hands. But suddenly, one encounter with the king changed his destiny. One encounter with the king changed his circumstances. Today, this evening, I want to encourage you, church, that one moment, one moment that you spend with the presence of the king of God, kings and the lord of lords, you are the whole address changes here from overnight from minutes from where he was God made him a millionaire he was restored back all that, that he had lost and not only that he was given a very kingly royal invitation it says like this you will always eat at my table how many of you are ready to say that Lord I want to come to your presence this evening and say what is it that Lord that you have remembered me I want you to close your eyes because time is already past. How many of you say, Lord, I am yielding my heart, my life to you to be rebuilt once again. Repair my broken altars, God. Altars of prayer, altars of holiness, altars of seeking God, altars of in relationship with God. Father, restore my life this evening. God is going to restore your life once again, young people. Ah, the Holy Spirit is prophesying to the church. Church, it is time that you come back to the heart of worship. You come back to the presence of God, for I have been waiting for you. I want you to start praying at this moment. There is something unusual happening right now. I see there is an inner healing happening in the lives of many people even right now. Even you might be not present here. But those people are watching us online. You might be a person who is going through so much of emptiness. Who might be going through so much of pain. Who must be going through so much of depression. Brothers and sisters, there is solution in the presence of God. God loves you this evening. And the Lord is prophesying that I have loved you with an ever lasting love I have loved you with the love that no one has ever shown 2nd Corinthians chapter 1 verse 3 says like this praise be to the God of father of our Lord Jesus the father of compassion he's the father of compassion can you all rise up on your feet right now as we look upon the face of God hallelujah I sing praises to your name Oh Lord, praises to your name. Oh Lord, for your name is great and greatly to be praised. I sing praises to your name. Lift your voice and sing it. Oh Lord, praises to you. Father, I just want to say thank you for your presence that is moving oh, upon this place. Lord, I pray God that you will take this ministry to a new level. A new level altogether, my God. And greatly to be praised. For your name. For 
your name is great and greatly to be praised. Father, we just want to say thank you, Master, that you're in our midst this evening. And I pray, God, that you name. will continue to minister to your people this evening, God. Lord, to all of those people who are watching us right now on Zoom, on Facebook, and YouTube, I pray that the presence of God will always shadow them. I come against every schemes of the enemy, every every spirit of fear, every spirit of intimidation, every spirit of depression, every spirit of sickness, every spirit of Lord anxiety. I come against this in the name of Jesus. Father, I pray that Lord, that you restore your people, that you do great and mighty things. As my brother said, behold, I will do a new thing. And I pray, God, that the new thing will come across in the name of Jesus. I thank you for Pastor Wilson Joseph, Pastor Roy, Master, for being such an amazing blessing to this generation, God. I pray that you'll honor them and their families and the ministry in the church, Lord. Pastor Stephen, I thank you for his life. Honor him, Master. In everything we give you praise. In Jesus' name we pray. You are not alone in this journey. We are with you. Young people, you can tell your things to us. We are there with you in prayer. May the Lord bless you. Thank you, Brother Stephen. Thank you, Pastor Sengel. Thank you, Pastor Roy, for this opportunity. It's really an indeed a privilege. May God's grace be upon you.